The next presenter is Dr. Uh, James Monica, is one of our upper extremity surgeons, also assistant professor in our Department of Orthopedics. Talk about scapular injury. Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming. I have nothing to disclose. All right, so let's go back to the 80s. Um, we'll talk about 49ers for a second. Um, back in the 80s, Joe Montana was the starting quarterback. We all probably know that. Back then, though, not many people knew who the backup was, uh, Steve Young. And then, of course, the legendary coach, Bill Walsh. So he was pretty much the mastermind behind these two quarterbacks. So what does this have to do with the scapula or the shoulder? So as clinicians, we all have our tiers of diagnoses. So and it usually has to do with how common we see the pathology. So typically, you know, your first tier is uh, rotator cuff tears, labral tears, instability. That's kind of what comes to your mind first uh, when you're evaluating patients, especially athletes. Um, then in second tier, kind of less common diagnosis, uh, scapula disorders. And oftentimes, scapula disorders could be, could be overlooked, actually. And the interesting thing is that behind all of these diagnoses is that usually there is a problem with the scapula. So rotator cuff tear, labral tear, instability. If you look at the scapula and how it's moving, you'll find issues with it and also uh, ways to treat it. So that's where Bill Walsh is kind of behind both these guys. Um, and my hope is that after this talk, you won't overlook the scapula. Uh, as we all know, Steve Young ended up being a Hall of Fame quarterback uh, when, he, when he got the chance. So what is scapular dyskinesis and how is it treated? Uh, so we'll cover this question along with going over some normal uh, scapular function. Uh, we'll go over dyskinesis, methods of classifying dyskinesis, evaluation techniques, and treatments. So the function of the scapula is mainly to facilitate glenohumeral congruence. Uh, scapular motion causes the acromion to elevate uh, with arm elevation. It's really what affords uh, such great range of motion and provide while providing stability of the shoulder uh, due to scapular motion. Um, it facilitates optimal force transfer from the core to the hand and it serves as a stable base for optimal activation of the scapular muscles. Uh, rotator cuff strength can be improved when the scapula is stabilized in neutral retraction. So what is scapular dyskinesis? Uh, so uh, Dr. Kibler um, wrote a lot about scapular dyskinesis and he defined it as observable alterations in the position of the scapula and the patterns of scapular motion in relation to the thoracic cage. He came up with a classification which shows where uh, the scapula is most prominent. So in type 1, uh, he described uh, the prominence is most notable at the inferior angle of the scapula and this could be due mainly to over tightness of the pec minor. Uh, type 2 is the medial border of the scapula is most prominent, and this is what's most commonly seen in scapular winging. And then type 3, the superior angle uh, of the scapula is most prominent, and this is most often due to overactivity of the elevators of the scapula, like the elevator scapulae and the upper trapezius. The two main muscles at work here, which really determine where the scapula is moving, uh, are the upper and lower trapezius muscles as well as the serratus anterior and you can see the vectors of pull of these muscles on the scapula. There are spaces around the scapula also uh, where pathology can be located. Uh, in the front you have the serratus anterior space located over here, uh, the subscapularis space uh, right in front of the, the subscapularis too. And within these spaces there are bursa. Uh, so you have the subscapularis bursa here, scapulothoracic bursa, and then uh, scapulotrapezial bursa, and these can become inflamed. So there are a wide variety of causes of scapular dyskinesis. We can separate them into primary and secondary causes. Uh, we're all familiar with a primary cause uh, being neurologic winging, where you have injury to nerves, which we'll discuss in a little bit, that can cause, to, that can cause winging of the scapula. And then you could have soft tissue pathology, as we mentioned, the bursa, which is located around the scapula, can become inflamed. Uh, muscular weakness is a very common cause, and also some anomalous muscle insertions or absent muscles. 
And then there's bone and soft tissue uh, pathology. So bone masses like osteochondromas, uh, soft tissue masses like elastofibromas. Uh, you could have reactive uh, spurs form on the scapula. Uh, fractures certainly can cause um, problems with scapular motion. Um, there could be an abnormal superior scapular angle that can cause abnormalities with motion and then uh, more worrisome things like malignant tumors like chondrosarcoma. Uh, these can all be well evaluated with uh, three-dimensional imaging with either CT scan or, or MRI. And then secondary causes, um, glenohumeral instability uh, can be as, um, is as often associated with uh, abnormal scapular motion, adhesive capsulitis, uh, and periscapular muscle strains. And then postural causes, uh, scoliosis and kyphosis are um, common causes of scapular pain. There's other associations. Uh, these were all uh, these are all basically studies published. Uh, one here showing uh, visual abnormalities uh, with scapular motion associated with subacromial impingement, um, distal radius fractures, uh, middle mid-shaft clavicle fractures, and then uh, one from uh, spinal accessory nerve palsy just from carrying climbing gear. And then also with uh, posture, as I mentioned, slouch posture can be associated with abnormal scapular motion and pain. It's also, um, uh, it's also associated with uh, type 3 AC joint uh, dislocations as well. So the prevalence of abnormal scapular motion or scapular dyskinesis, uh, dyskinesis was uh, best looked at at this uh, systematic review where they looked at 12 studies, uh, 1,400 athletes. It was all level two or three evidence and they showed that dyskinesis was higher in overhead athletes in their throwing shoulders and 61% of, uh, of these uh, athletes compared with non-overhead athletes, uh, which there was only 33%, and this was significant. They didn't really uh, discuss whether or not um, these patients were symptomatic or not during all, with, throughout this review of all these studies. So there, is, uh, there are a lot of patients without symptoms that do have abnormal scapular motion, so I should be aware of that. Most of the problems arise uh, with, an issue, with issues with protraction. So um, scapular motion, this is retraction when you're bringing your shoulders back. Protraction is kind of hunching your shoulders forward. And protraction is more of, the, more of what causes problems. It decreases the subacromial space, which can lead uh, to impingement. Um, it decreases uh, a rotator cuff strength, uh, increases strain on the anterior glenohumeral ligaments. Um, it also it can increase the risk of internal impingement um, and then increase uh, the strain on the scapular stabilizing muscles. So really, when you're working with these patients, you really want to have them focus more on strengthening the muscles that retract the shoulders. Uh, scapular winging uh, can be caused by uh, injuries uh, to the spinal accessory nerve or the long thoracic nerve. Uh, you see different patterns of winging based on uh, which nerve is affected. So on the left here, this is scapular winging due to trapezius palsy, where the inferior angle goes out, and the trapezius muscle is innervated by the spinal accessory nerve. And then on, on the right here, you can see a medial winging, and that uh, happens with injury to um, the long thoracic nerve, which innervates the serratus anterior muscle. There could also be um, uh, secondary causes to scapular winging, and also voluntary winging, where patients can make their uh, scapular wing on their own without any um, physical uh, problem. Uh, then there's something called the six scapula uh, syndrome, which is uh, s defined as scapular malposition, inferior medial border prominence, uh, coracoid pain, and dyskinesis. And this is often due to uh, tight pectoralis uh, minor and biceps. Uh, you could picture those, both those muscles on the coracoid and uh, causing a more prominent inferior medial angle of the scapula. Um, and also it, it, uh, leads to a lowered throwing shoulder. And this uh, can lead to pain, but uh, can be corrected with therapy. So uh, presentation, um, you may, uh, patients often can complain of snapping or, or clicking. So you may feel crepitus on exam, um, pain with swimming, throwing, any overhead movement, uh, tenderness in the superior medial border or inferior pole of the scapula, and then um, 
you may want to get an x-ray also. You may see some bony abnormalities. And if you do, you may want to further investigate this with uh, three-dimensional three imaging. So there are different tests that uh, can be performed to indicate weakness of the scapular muscles, and we'll go through each of these. So the isometric scapular pinch test is uh, done uh, to see if uh, straining the scapular muscles causes pain. So you ask the patient to retract their shoulders uh, for 15 to 20 seconds, and if that produces uh, burning or pain or, or muscle pain or weakness, then, then that's a positive test. Uh, wall push-ups are uh, great for evaluating symmetry and uh, noting any abnormalities uh, with um, scapular motion. And you want to do uh, at least five to 10 wall push-ups, not just one, because you can see changes occur as, they, uh, as their endurance decreases. The lateral scapular slide test is done where you actually measure the inferior angle of the, um, and the medial border of the scapula uh, from a spinous process on each side. And you ask the patient uh, to hold their shoulders at resting position with their hands on their hips and then with their arms uh, at 90 degrees with, with internal rotation. And you can see the difference, the measurement between the spinous process and the scapula should be different uh, by more than 1.5 centimeters uh, for that to be a positive test. That's kind of how you measure it there. Then there's the scapular assistance test uh, during abduction uh, or for forward elevation. Assistance is provided by manually stabilizing the scapula. Uh, and rotating the inferior border of the scapula as the arm moves. And this simulates the force couple activity of the serratus and the, and the trap. And this can eliminate uh, symptoms, actually, that uh, cause scapular dyskinesis. And then there's the scapular retraction test, where you uh, stabilize the medial scapula border as the arm is elevated or externally rotated. And then that can provide relief of impingement symptoms. Uh, and that, that would be a positive test if it does uh, produce relief of symptoms. So treatments, um, initially rest anti-inflammatories, uh, muscular training and postural training are really key. Um, for uh, bursitis, uh, uh, steroid injections uh, can help. Um, then more aggressive uh, surgeries, which um, are, are very rarely performed, uh, include arthroscopic bursectomy, uh, muscle tendon transfers for those with nerve injuries where either the serratus is out or the trapezius is out. And then um, very uh, aggressive treatment would be an open partial scapulectomy, which I've, I've never seen before. Um, just one tip with steroid injections, this is the way the, the patient's positioned. Uh, they're uh, prone on a table with their hand behind their back. And then the injection, it's very important that the needle is parallel to the floor and not uh, going towards the uh, towards the rib cage. Um, this is an example here of a pneumothorax uh, that can be that can happen, uh, which, I, which I have seen before by actually my mentor when I was training uh, had one of these happen. Um, this is a list of guidelines for, uh, for rehab. This is published, I'm going to just go ahead here in the interest of time. This is published in uh, the Journal Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons by Kibler, and it goes through um, uh, all the exercises in different, uh, at the different uh, weeks of, of therapy to apply these exercises. First, working on scapular motion, uh, stretching, uh, strengthening, and it gives specific exercises too. It's a, it's a, it's a good reference. Um, so just take home points. Um, scapular dyskinesis has several primary and secondary causes. Uh, protraction is often the problem, so really working on those muscles to help with retraction is key. And uh, physical therapy is, uh, is really where it's at for treatment of these disorders. And, and it's important not to overlook uh, the scapula because uh, there are a, a lot of associations with many uh, disorders of the shoulder. So thank you.